Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to a new series in science and Islam. The title of this series is DNA and Design. There will be multiple lectures, inshallah, that will explore various aspects, but the main theme is that the more we understand about DNA, the more we can begin to feel confident that life was designed and did not arise accidentally or by chance. This, of course, is an age-old debate between theists and atheists, scientists on both sides. And the science of the last 50 years has really shed some amazing light and given some perspectives that I would like to share with you. And I believe that these perspectives make the design argument more and more plausible the more we learn and the chance slash randomness argument less and less plausible. Of course, my point of view is coming from the theistic world uh, as a believing Muslim and specifically trying to reflect what is espoused in verses 190 and 191 of Surat Al-Amran. الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار And basically what these verses are saying is that in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of night and day there are indeed signs for those endowed with insight So that within the physical world one can look for signs to infer God's creative activity. And who are those who are endowed with insight? They are those who remember God when they stand, when they sit, when they lie down, and they reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth. Our Lord, thou hast not created this without meaning and purpose. Glory to thee, keep us safe from the suffering of the fire. And I believe that the more we learn about DNA, the more we begin to understand and sense the statement that thou hast not created this without meaning and purpose. That is, of course, the opposite of randomness and chance. And we need to begin by framing the debate. We need to understand that I would venture to say most scientists at this point would somehow echo the sentiment expressed by the well-known atheist biologist Richard Dawkins of Oxford University. And you have the quote here. So powerful is the illusion of design, it took humanity until the mid-19th century to realize that it is an illusion. In 1859, Charles Darwin announced one of the greatest ideas ever to occur to a human mind, cumulative evolution by natural selection. Living complexity is indeed orders of magnitude too improbable to have come about by chance, but only if we assume that all the luck has come in one fell swoop. When cascades of small chance steps accumulate, you can reach prodigious heights of adaptive complexity. That cumulative buildup is evolution. Its guiding force is natural selection. And this is predominantly what is taught in schools. And this is predominantly what has filtered to the public. And indeed, uh, as Khan Academy says, that nothing in contemporary science has proved more challenging to religious believers than evolutionary biology. Now, my point with this lecture series is that, as always, what is taught in school and what is reflected in the popular media is probably a few decades behind the cutting edge. And the cutting edge of science, I believe, has begun to shed a different light on this debate, making the design argument more and more plausible. And in this series, although the discovery of DNA itself is a fascinating story, 
uh, how initially in the 1940s scientists thought that hereditary information was passed through proteins, not through DNA, how Richard Avery in the 1940s discovered DNA as uh, a structure responsible for passing hereditary information in bacteria, but that still did not change the minds of many scientists. How the race to then unlock the structure of DNA began um, in earnest with uh, Linus Pauling of Caltech, the world's leading physical chemist at that time, uh, closing in on the structure. And then how Watson and Crick um, beat him out in early 1953 and published the double helix structure of DNA um, and so forth. It, it's a terribly fascinating story, but it is really a sidetrack. And I just wanted to mention some glimpses of it, uh, but we will not be focusing on the history, but we will rather be focusing, inshallah, on the structure of DNA the role of DNA in the cell, and discoveries of the last few decades, which really make it less and less plausible that DNA, which directs all genetic information, all protein synthesis, etc., was something that arose by chance. And I would like to end uh, this introduction um, by noting that there are now scientists who are proponents of intelligent design and who are basically making the point that distinguishing design from chance is something that we as humans do all the time. We can sometimes do it scientifically and we sometimes do it um, casually, informally, even unconsciously. Uh, and uh, one of those scientists, an American mathematician named William Dembski, has tried to formalize this process in a book called The Design Inference, where he tries to find the mathematical underpinnings of how is it that we eliminate chance and determine that something is indeed designed. For those interested, it's, um, it, it's a very interesting book. It has received a mixed reception, uh, but that is I believe to some extent because the scientific community uh, is biased against the notion of intelligent design. Uh, but for those uh, interested and with some mathematical background, you, you may want to find uh, this book and, and uh, go through it. However, the point I'm making is that science has begun to develop tools and methodologies to distinguish chance from design and to formalize the process that you and I do um, unconsciously every day. And what do I mean by that? I mean, for example, if you visit Mount Rushmore and you see the faces of the presidents carved in the rock, we all automatically understand uh, without having to go through a deductive process that this is something that was designed. We know that earth and wind and rain and, and sand and water uh, can erode rocks and make them into interesting shapes, but nobody really entertains the possibility that the faces of the presidents on Mount Rushmore occurred by chance from uh, weathering of the mountain face. On the other hand, uh, when we look up in the sky and we see a cloud and we say, my, this cloud looks like a unicorn or we're at the store, uh, uh, shopping and we uh, go to the uh, potato box and pick up potatoes and we say, my, this potato looks like Richard Nixon. We don't believe that that is designed. We understand that, you know, that's uh, the product of chance. Uh, and so the design versus chance debate is a very significant one. And we as Muslims tend to take it purely from theological grounds. And by and large, we have not engaged on scientific grounds. And this lecture series, inshallah, hopes to be a contribution in the arena of uh, challenging um, the, the chance randomness argument on scientific grounds. And I have made clear already 
my own um, religious assumptions and background so that um, it is um, you know full disclosure join us for the next lecture uh, where we will begin actually now talking about science thank you and god bless assalamu alaikum